Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Fix Your Form, another episode where I take your form, the subscribers, my family, and treat you to some free coaching. If you want to get involved, I need three reps at 70% sent to askmikke at gmail.com, and hopefully you'll make the video. My first man right here, we got some conventional deadlifts. Overall... Looks really, really solid. First, let's start out with that lockout. What I need you to do is flex those quads, flex those glutes, and stand tall as hard as you can. Try not to lean back too much. What people think is uh, to overextend or get their shoulders behind the bar, which, yes, may be a technical rule for a lockout, uh, but what ends up happening is you end up overarching that low back, uh, soft glutes, and soft quads, and ha having a slightly bent or soft knee. So, Let's focus on just standing straight tall. Uh, number two, what I would try to do is really work on flexing those lats, especially with a hook grip or double over. It's almost easier, and you try to bend that bar over your legs, covering your armpits with them shoulders. We got more conventional pulls. My man, first thing, everybody here, uh, whether you're a beginner or intermediate, even advanced, what I want most of you to work on doing is let's stop doing some touch and go reps, especially uh, if your number one goal is to increase your deadlift or power lift your one rep max. Um, we can get into details on that in maybe another video, uh, but you're going to end up doing some kind of balancing as you can see in that slow-mo, whether you want to or not, uh, as well as get into different positions that will not emulate your one rep max or your starting position, and so it may not quote unquote transfer. Uh, second thing with my man right there is try to tighten up that back uh, and do a full reset. So step away from the bar and step to it, really focusing on tightening up that back. This is a conventional pull party. My man right here is looking real solid so far. Uh, overall, I would say that form is uh, looking A1, my friend. We'll see it from this different angle. Uh, but he gets nice and tight. Uh, his shoulders are flexed. You can see covering his armpits, really flexing his lats. And he's really pulling on that bar rather than yanking on it. Uh, one thing I might suggest is uh, experimenting with your head up just a bit uh, and moving that stance in just a hair. As much as you can get your weight kind of falling back, using that barbell as leverage. Uh, but overall, I'd say that's a really, really solid deadlift, my man. I like the resets. I like the control on the way down. You're not over-exaggerating it, but you're still in control of the barbell the entire way. Bar looks like it's staying nice and close. Back is really, really flat. Yeah, I'd say it's really, really solid, my dude. Really solid pull. I would say, uh, yeah, just move that head up a little bit, just a hair. Um, and then I'd focus on moving that stance in, or ex excuse me, maybe not focus, but experiment with moving that stance in, see how it feels. Uh, this angle's a little rough. We can't see a lower body. He's getting a little hyped. Let's see what we got. So we're jerking on the barbell a little bit. If you guys can compare and contrast in a 300-word essay, just kidding. Uh, but if you can compare and contrast that last gentleman from this gentleman, uh, you can see he, he tries to tighten his lats, but he's actually not getting tension on the bar. So then when he does tug on that bar or first get tension or heaviness in his hand, get weight in his hand, his back is the first thing to give because he still doesn't uh, take out all the tension in the system. People talk about pulling out the slack in the barbell, uh, which is kind of a cue or almost a result for what we really want to do is pull the slack out of our system. We want to get tension in our hamstrings, glutes, low back, and our lats going into the bar before we pull so that we can maintain that same position in our entire body. You can see as soon as the weight gets into his hand, that mid to low back starts to round a lot. Now, we can talk about rounding the low back for injury, we can talk about rounding the low back for this and that, but the fact of the matter is, I know you guys want to lift some weights, and if you're doing that, you're not going to be able to lift many weights. We got a sister here at Super Training Gym, shout out to Super Training Gym. Uh, my sister here sent it in a form, it looks really solid. Uh, my man before, just take your time, try to pull that weight slowly, and don't yank on it. I've done many a video on it. Overall, form right here looks really, really good. You can see she's getting a lot of tension in that bar, getting heavy hands or weight in her hands before she pulls. Uh, we'll see if we can get a side view, see how her back's doing. Uh, but from the front right here, form is looking A1 if I do say so myself. Bar looks like it's staying nice and close. One thing we always want to do because we're flexing our lats and because of the leverage, keeping the bar closer to your body is going to always feel a lot lighter. We want to flex that lat. Really, really solid. We get a hair uh, rounding in that in that back, but it's not that bad. I think overall it looks really solid. Obviously, the more fatigue you get, you're going to get a little bit more rounding. Uh, I would suggest uh, my sister here is to throw on a belt. Uh, I think once you start deadlifting, you know, and you even got your form semi down, I don't think it's a bad idea to throw on a light belt. Throw it on kind of loose and start to practice and learn about flexing into that belt. Um, not only is it going to allow you to stay a little bit safer, but it's going to allow everyone to lift a little bit more weight. The more weight you lift, 
one, obviously the more volume and strength you can gather, but also the more muscles we can get. And who doesn't want more muscles in their life? Really solid. We got the straps going. Uh, a lot of questions about straps versus non-straps. I think if you don't want to compete, using straps is absolutely fine. It allows you to stay a little more symmetrical in your pulling. Um, over under grip or hook grip are also just fine and obviously necessary. If you want to compete, you can't use straps. Um, and there's some disadvantages, but I think if you don't want to compete, straps are fine. If you do want to compete, straps are also fine, but you're going to have to really manage the time that you use them opposed to the times that you don't use them. So you can continue to build your grip and also the form itself will feel a little bit different. Kind of that getting the tension out like we mentioned, uh, as well as the range of motion may be different when you're using your hands compared to straps. So you have to get used to that. So I like to leave at least 12, maybe even 16 weeks with no straps leading up to a meet or a test. So talking about that lockout as a first gentleman, right there you can kind of see some soft knees. Um, because he's trying to lean back, what I'd rather have you guys think about doing is I think about almost a string from the top of my head and someone pulling my hair straight up or pulling that string straight up and I'm going to stand up tall as I can. Your shoulders will end up behind the bar. So flex your quads as hard as you can and flex your glutes as hard as you can at the top. Don't think about leaning back as much because again, when you lean back, you tend to overextend, put some unnecessary pressure on that low back, which may or may not cause injury in the long run. Um, but what it will do is make you bend those knees and technically be a soft lockout. Not only a soft lockout, but you can also get up down the barbell. Because sometimes you pull it all the way up, you're standing tall, then you'll bend those knees and the barbell will sink a little bit. Ends up being a no lift. And mind as well, whether you're competing or not, do the lift the right way. So my man right there, just try to stand as tall as you can, straight up, flex those quads, flex those glutes. We got some sumo action finally in the building. So overall, it looks pretty, really solid here. It looks like those knees are wanting to sink in a little bit when you're starting to pull. Um, so we'll see if we got a front view. But basically, what we always want to do when we squat, uh, conventional deadlift or sumo deadlift, but especially the sumo dead, because we want to really use our quads to pull. Once we get all that ten tension out of our body and our system and we get as tight as we can in our midline from our shoulders to our hips, all we really have to do is flex our quads and you're going to pull the sumo really well. You flex your quads to the very top, then flex your glutes, bada boom, bada bing, you just deadlifted in sumo. That's what, kind of the main difference. Oh, we moved on quick. So what I'm going to suggest you do is either force those knees out a little bit more, start with your hips a little bit higher, or perhaps move that stance in. If I had a front view, I'd try to give that answer for you, but I would experiment with those because we want constant tension in the quads forcing those knees out. Uh-oh, we got a clean looking sumo here. Let me see that again. DJ, bring that back. So as you see here, he's got a little bit lower hips there, which is fine. He's got a little bit of a, 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 a ripping and gripping as the old powerlifters say. Ripping and gripping, son. Gripping and ripping, boy. Um, which isn't bad uh, as long as you have that tension in there because, again, once the weights start to get heavier, not only will it put unnecessary stress on the low back, but what will happen is that weight will tip you forward. Your hips will fall too far, uh, excuse me, too high up, and your chest will fall too far forward uh, so you cannot recover and lift the weight. So what I would suggest, my man, is just spend some time and try to set up the other way. Try to use the bar to get that tension rather than get the tension in your body first. Um, overall, though, Especially once you get the bar moving, your form is really, really solid. It's just that setup itself. You might need to force those knees out a little bit more and hips just a hair higher. Uh, and try grabbing the bar first before you drop your hips. Now, I may be wrong, but if you give it a two to three weeks, you can even see there, actually, that was a good rep in that slow-mo, that the bar gets kicked forward. And so if this weight's a little bit too heavier, heavier, closer to one rep max, or you're trying to do one rep max, and you set up in that manner, and that bar gets kicked forward, you're going to be done for. Rather than if you're setting up the other way, uh, kind of bar first, hips low second, uh, you might be able to pull that bar into you and just be able to keep the bar more stable and more in line where you want it under heavier loads. It might be more repeatable. Even right there, you can see it, how you pull, it doesn't go anywhere, then your hips move, then your chest falls forward, and then the bar begins to uh, move. Rather than we can just kind of skip that whole step and hopefully get tension through the bar first and then really hit the gas and start going. Overall though, man, form's really, really solid. Um, but I think if you just bend at the hips first, kind of from this position right here, grab the bar, then get the tension in the lats, tension in the low back, and then drop the hips, you'll be all right. Uh, it's just inconsistent how far forward your knees will go here and then where your hips will need to be when you pull. Um, Kind of naturally because of gravity and tings, um, your hips will find the proper place to pull before the barbell moves. Um, it's just about how you can repeat that 
uh, over and over and over and kind of um, take away the other factors so we can make it repeatable. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like this series, be sure to share it with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. Turn on notifications. we got a new video dropping Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. I appreciate you. Silent Mike, we out of here, fam.